I study Toxocara. Um, right now I study Toxocara contamination in playgrounds and parks typically in sandboxes or in soil. I marked out each park. Not all parks are a perfect square, but then you try to get a sample from each corner of the park and then right in the middle if you can. Um, and then if, if you are in a park that we would consider a low risk park that only has tree bases, then you try to get five samples around the different tree bases that are in the park. So crisis comes in a few different forms, um, but it's basically caused by ingesting the eggs that you would find in, a, in the sand in a playground or a park, and it can cause different forms of disease. Those who were infected with toxocariasis actually had um, trends toward lower neurocognitive function. So toxocara is, an, is a um, gastrointestinal parasite of both dogs and cats. And so the research that we've done so far seems to point, and it's still preliminary data, but it seems to point to cats contaminating um, the playgrounds actually more than dogs. Burning questions, how many people are outside infected and we don't know and then maybe they have, they're struggling in school and we have no idea that it could be secondary to something that they picked up. So the molecular part of our study is involving something called multi-parallel quantitative real-time PCR. This is a technique that I developed to use a low-cost method of DNA um, isolation and identification um, for parasites. In combination with Donna's egg flotation method, we developed a novel DNA extraction that allows the DNA from each parasite to survive the heating and extraction technique. I really think um, that the reason there's more contamination in lower socioeconomic areas is because if people are struggling to do simple things um, financially, you know, pay bills and things like that, the, the animals will get lower on the totem pole as far as being taken to the vet or being dewormed.